Legal Services for Children is built on the premise that young people need to have a voice in the systems and the situations that are impacting them and that legal services are a way to do that. It was created in 1975 with the concept that a young person in crisis has the right to their own attorney, someone who is speaking for them. And to this day, we continue to provide free services to low-income Bay Area youth who need to use the legal system to stabilize their life through a legal guardianship, through fighting a deportation case, to come out of crisis situations and be able to reach their full potential in adulthood. All of our cases start with a legal need. After we accept a case, typically we assign a social worker, um, and the social worker does an assessment with the client, and sometimes finds additional presenting problems, and some which may inhibit the ability to petition for whatever their legal need is. They might have undiagnosed mental health needs, um, which really need treatment, because they're not going to be successful in school or even at home um, because of those needs. One of our early projects that we did in the 90s, um, our project working with families impacted by HIV, um, had a support group and a mural came out of a support group that still stands today in Balmy Alley. And then just last month, we had um, a mural come out of be the final project of the support group that we had for new immigrants. We represent a huge number of young people who have come to this country by themselves, alone, unaccompanied immigrants. Our clients and the young people who are fleeing abusive, violent situations have then been further victimized. One of the things that we see is a huge percentage of the young women who have immigrated unaccompanied um, were sexually assaulted on the journey. And one of the most tragic things that we saw recently was a, a client who then was yet again victimized sexually in the United States. What is so critical for us is to intervene as quickly as we possibly can to prevent further victimization. Fifty-five children that we represented last year in 2015 are now legal permanent residents who came to us undocumented, fearing and facing deportation, are permanent residents in the United States right now. Not facing deportation, knowing that you can work, knowing that you can go to school, and that you can go to college has all kinds of impacts on your general well-being, your emotional well-being, and your sense of wellness. So we're really proud to have contributed to, to the stability of those young people. I migrated here to the U.S. in 2009. Migrants don't just come to, you know, to come to get a job or just to have a better life. It's just sometimes it's, it's a matter of life, you know, life and death. I was undocumented until um, 2013, actually. Um, you don't have the chance to get a job, and if you do, it's, you know, it's under exploitation. You don't have access to uh, a lot of the resources that naturalized citizens have, you know. Some of my teachers uh, had heard of uh, legal services for children before, and so they uh, connected with connected me with Ron, and I was able to get a uh, work permit and you know a driver's license and a California ID, and so he you know it made me feel a lot safer here in the U.S. I worked my way uh, you know all the way to college. There's lack of representation here in the U.S., especially for minorities and especially for undocumented um, you know people, and I'm trying to become an immigration lawyer. I want to be that representation. I want to be that, that resource that they need, you know, just given more opportunities, you know, the ones they deserve as human beings and equal human beings. We will evolve to match the needs of our community. I appreciate the fact that World Childhood kind of helps us look at that evolutionary process and motivates us to, to evolve over time as well. We all have a responsibility towards the children in our community to make sure that they can rise up and, and take over for all of us.